Radio Free Quebec presents the Paul Reed Boxing Day Special. Good evening to you, wherever you may be. I'm Paul Reed. I'd like to take this time with you at home to share with you some of my childhood memories of Boxing Day. If you don't know, if this is your first introduction to Paul Reed Boxing Day, I was one of 26 children, and our Boxing Days had to be the most lovely, the most beautiful. I don't just mean in retrospect. We had to be a certain age to go with our mother to the Boxing Day specials at Eaton's and Fairview. And I remember my first one as, as if it were yesterday. We were so excited. After Dad had finished strapping the youngest of us on the roof of the Pontiac Le Mans station wagon, we'd get there. Even though we didn't have much money, each of us got to choose our own carpet sample. I remember the one I chose that first year. It was brown. But still today, whenever I catch a glimpse of something brown, it always stirs with me just wonderful memories. I now like to read to you my favorite story from this time of year. It's called The Littlest Ink. Once upon a time, oh, many years ago, as time is calculated by men, there was, in paradise, the most miserable, thoroughly unhappy, and utterly dejected cherub, who was known throughout heaven as the littlest ink. He was exactly four years, six months, five days, seven hours, and forty-two minutes of age when he presented himself to the venerable gatekeeper and waited for admittance. From that moment on, the heavenly peace was never quite the same, and the littlest angel soon became the despair of all the heavenly hosts. The shrill, ear-splitting whistle resounded at all hours throughout the golden streets. Yes, and on top of that, he inevitably sang off-key at the singing practice of the heavenly choir. Then it came to pass that Jesus was to be born of Mary of Bethlehem. The angels and archangels, the seraphim and the cherubim, the gatekeeper and the wingmaker, Yes, even the Halo Smith put aside their usual tasks to prepare their gifts for that blessed infant. All but the littlest angel. What, oh what, could a small angel give that would please the holy infant? The time of the miracle was very close at hand when the littlest angel at last decided on his gift. It was only a small, rough, unsightly box, lying among all the other glorious gifts of all the angels of paradise, gifts of such rare and radiant splendor and breathless beauty, heaven and all the universe were lighted by the mere reflection of their glory. And when the littlest angel saw this, he devoutly wished he might reclaim his shabby gift. It was ugly, it was worthless. If only he could hide it away from the sight of God before it was even noticed. But it was too late. The hand of God moved slowly over all that bright array of shining gifts, then paused, then dropped, then came to rest on the lowly gift of the littlest angel. The littlest angel wept bitter tears. There was an ominous and dreadful silence in the celestial city. A silence complete and undisturbed, save for the heartbroken sobbing of the littlest angel. 
Then, suddenly, the voice of God, like divine music, rose and swelled throughout paradise, saying, How did you angels manage to come up with so many crabby gifts? What use has the Christ child of a Swiffer, or a year's subscription to O Magazine? Who got him a gift certificate to Red Lobster? He's Jewish. Of all the gifts of all the angels, I find this small box pleases me most. For in it, we can put all of the crap that the Christ child couldn't possibly want. And then the rough, unsightly box of the littlest angel began to be filled with crap of every color and description. And then, when it was filled to brim, it floated slowly over the firmament, so slowly and so beautifully, that it took a full day to float down to the earth. And the people of earth rejoiced, for now they understood that all of the gifts given on Christmas Day that people didn't want could be put into a box the day after Christmas, and either returned to the store or placed in a cupboard and forgotten. And ever since that day, the day after Christmas was what all men would call forever Boxing Day.